Your bloodline looks perfect. The feathers are tight. The body is balanced. The stance is proud. You've invested time, money, and years of careful breeding. You've followed the feeding program to the letter. Conditioned them just like the old champions used to do. But then, fight day comes. And something doesn't add up. The rooster looks game, but he doesn't finish. He breaks too soon. He lacks cutting power. He gets outclassed by birds that look far more ordinary. You start to question everything. Is it the feed? The handling? The pointing? Or is there something deeper? Something buried in the blood? A genetic flaw you've been passing down without even knowing it. Because the truth is this. You can't fix in conditioning what's broken in breeding. Even the most famous. Bloodlines, sweaters, kelsos, hatch, roundheads can fall apart if certain genetic mistakes go unchecked. In this video, we'll expose five hidden genetic errors that silently destroy even the most promising gamefowl families. These are the mistakes that ruin champions long before they ever set foot in the pit. If you're serious about protecting your line's performance, preserving its legacy, and building a future worth fighting for, watch until the very end. Because the failure isn't always in the pit. Sometimes, it starts in the brood pen. First on our list is one of the most common and most dangerous mistakes, genetic bottlenecking. It happens when a bloodline becomes too tight, with only a few select birds passing on the genes. What it means, you keep breeding from the same narrow pool. Father to daughter, brother to sister, grandson back to grandmother. It feels like you're preserving purity, but what you're really doing is shrinking your genetic foundation. Why it's dangerous, the tighter the blood, the smaller the margin for error. Eventually, your birds begin to suffer from low fertility, fewer eggs hatch, and less vigor in the chicks. Weakened immune systems, they get sick easier, stress faster. Inconsistent performance, one may show brilliance, but the rest gas out before the break. And worst of all, you awaken hidden flaws, genetic issues that would have stayed buried in a wider pool. Example, there was a breeder who hit gold with a winning trio. Clean drag fight wins. Powerful cutters. Solid station. He bred. Them tight. Brother to sister. Generation after generation. By the fourth generation, the birds look textbook. Same color. Same form. Same name. But in the pit? They couldn't handle pressure. They'd panic when cut. Some wouldn't even finish a fight. No matter the conditioning, they lacked heart and stamina. Here's how you avoid this trap. Use line breeding, not in breeding. Stay within the family, but not too close. Keep multiple lines alive. Don't rely on just one trio or cock. And every few generations, introduce an outcross. Not to change the blood, but to add strength, vigor, and flexibility. Because in breeding, tight isn't always right. Purity without strength is just weakness in disguise. They look sharp, perfect station, tight feathering, that deep mahogany hackle you love. You walk them across the yard, and heads turn. But the real question is, will they fight? Too many breeders, especially new ones, fall into a common trap, breeding for looks instead of performance. They choose their next brood cock not based on what he did in the pit, but how pretty he looked on the tie cord. Why this fails? Game fowl were never meant to be showbirds. They weren't bred to win beauty contests. They were bred. For function, for battle. So when you focus too much on comb style, feather pattern, leg color, or even how clean their station is, you might be ignoring the traits that actually win fights. What you're risking. Cutting accuracy, the ability to land a lethal blow, power, force behind every strike, air game, elevation, control, agility, recovery under pressure, when wounded, can he think and fight back. Real talk. That beautiful, show-quality stag with perfect tail symmetry? He might fold in the first exchange. Meanwhile, the rugged, battle-scarred warrior, with a crooked toe, a busted feather, and no color uniformity? He might just be the one to save your whole bloodline. Because ability doesn't always come. In a fancy package. Story. One veteran breeder once culled a flashy red cock because he didn't like its comb. He later found out that Cox's brother had won four out of five fights in brutal drag-style derbies. Looks never told the full story. Breeder's tip. Always prioritize performance. 
Choose breeders that have been tested under real pressure, not just tied on the cord. Yes, it's okay to consider looks after you've seen proof in the pit. But remember this rule, looks are a bonus. Performance is the bloodline. He's nine months old. Just won his first fight. Clean, sharp, full of fire. You get excited, tie him next to the brood pan. Next week, he's already breeding. But here's the truth. You're breeding a child. Why this is a major mistake. Breeding birds before full maturity, especially young stags or early laying pullets, short circuits the process of evaluation. You're selecting before the story's even begun. The results? Incomplete traits. The bird hasn't fully developed his style or cutting rhythm. Poor fertility, sperm count is lower, and hatch rate often drops. Weak bone structure, you're unknowingly passing on fragility. Behavioral inconsistency, he might look game now, but fall apart when truly pressured later. Scientific note, genetics isn't just about what's visible now, it's about what stabilizes over time. A stag's first fight is just a glimpse. His true fighting character, stamina, and heart reveal themselves through multiple tests and maturity. Example, one breeder shared that his champion cock at nine months was lightning fast. But when bred too early, his offspring were erratic. Some couldn't even hold their wings after six minutes. He later rebred the same cock at 20 months, post full testing, and the next batch? Different game altogether. Wait until your breeders are fully developed. Cocks, 16 to 18 months, tested under real pressure, not just sparring wins. Hence, proven layers, ideally from performance-tested parents. Even better, breed only after multiple fights and recoveries. That's when the real genes rise. Don't rush greatness. If you wouldn't let a child raise a family, why? Would you let one sire your next generation? You raised a beautiful batch. 10 chicks from your favorite trio, the bloodline you brag about. But deep down, you know, only two are truly pit-worthy. And what do you do with the other eight? You breed them anyway. Because they're related. Because they look nice. Because you're emotionally attached. Big mistake. Why this is a breeding disaster. Culling isn't just about numbers. It's about preserving integrity. Every time you let a subpar bird pass on its genes, you're not maintaining the line. You're watering it down. Even if it's 7-8 sweater, 3 quarters hatch, or came from your champion broodcock, if it can't perform, it doesn't belong in the brood pen. Period. Old school wisdom. The old timers had a saying, breed the best, eat the rest, and they meant it literally. Not every bird is meant to pass on its blood. Because in the pit, bloodline means nothing if the bird can't deliver. The emotional trap, it's hard. You raise them from chicks. You watch them grow. But this is where many breeders fail, they get sentimental. And in doing so, they build a bloodline full of beautiful mediocrity. Real world tip, track, results. Keep notes, watch your stags under real pressure. Cull anything that lacks. Heart, does he fight when hurt? Power, do his hits matter? Intelligence, does he adjust, avoid, control? Durability, can he take punishment and stay in the game? Anything less is a liability not a legacy. Culling is the price you pay to earn a great bloodline. It's not cruelty, it's clarity. Because in breeding, every wrong bird you keep is a step away from greatness. You say this cock is a hatch. You say he came from a champion yard. You say the blood is proven. But here's the real question. What did he actually do? Not the line. Him. Because bloodline names don't win fights. Birds do. Here's the issue. Too many breeders fall into the trap of name dropping. This one's three quarters sweater, one quarter Kelso from a winning farm. Okay, but was the actual cock your breeding tested? Did he win anything? Was he even fought? Or was he just the brother of a winner? Standing on someone else's reputation. Breeding truth. Genetics is individual based, not brand based. Two full brothers can have completely different game styles, fight IQ durability, or simply heart. One might be a legend, the other a liability. Quick example, there was once a breeder who kept a brother of his derby champion. Same clutch, same feed, 
Same everything. But in the pit? The brother folded in under 30 seconds. Twice. No cut. No fire. Just name. Real breeding tip. Start keeping records. Real, detailed ones. Track every breeder's. Wins or losses in actual fights. Style. Is he a dragger, breaker, counterhitter? Injuries. Does he? Recover well or break down? Recovery time. Stamina. Mental reset. Toughness. Offspring performance. Are his sons consistent or hit or miss? Because if he or she hasn't proven it in the pit, they have no business proving anything in the brood pen. Final. Punchline. Stop breeding papers. Stop breeding names. Start breeding results. Because legacies are built on what's done, not what's claimed. Let's quickly recap the five deadly genetic mistakes that quietly destroy even the strongest bloodlines. 1. Genetic bottlenecking, breeding too tight, without fresh blood or variation. 2. Overselection for appearance, choosing looks, over actual pit performance. 3. Breeding too young, siring birds before full maturity and testing. 4. Not culling based on performance, letting weak birds breed just because of bloodline. 5. Not tracking parent results, assuming names, means something without personal proof. These mistakes are silent killers. They don't show up in the cord. They show up in the pit when it's too late to fix. But now that you know, you can stop repeating them and start building something real. If you found this helpful, do your part. Like, subscribe, and share this with fellow breeders who care about doing it right. Because true bloodlines aren't built on hype. They're built on wisdom, testing, and patience. Drop a comment below. What's the biggest breeding mistake you've ever made or witnessed someone else? Make. This is your channel for real game foul knowledge. Straight talk. No fluff. Stay sharp. Breed smart. And as always, see you next round.